Kuar tea is a tea unlike any other. It's the tea you can drink now, or age over the course of years or even decades. How to pick a tea for aging is another topic, but assuming you have a tea that you like, then it could be worth aging as well. This can be a long process, but keeping a few things in mind will help you achieve the results you're after. There are a few basic tenets of storage that apply to all teas, and Puar is no exception. You must, must keep your teas out of sunlight. Treat your precious Puar cakes like baby vampires and keep them away from the sun. It's really as simple as that. Avoid letting your tea come into contact with strong smells or fragrances. This could be perfume or cologne, scented bathroom products, cleaners, or cooking smells from your home. Basically, if you can smell it, you probably should keep your tea away from it. So if you're thinking of storing your puar above the spice cabinet in your kitchen, maybe you should reconsider. Ideally, your puar can have a room of its own, but we'll discuss storage options and suggestions in our next video. Separate your teas. This is perhaps a bit less intuitive than the first two suggestions, but it's generally best to keep your teas separate. This will prevent flavors from crossing over to each other. With puar, it's especially important to keep your raw and ripe teas separate as it's very easy for the fermented qualities of ripe to transfer to raw. After all, the goal of aging raw puar is for it to ferment naturally. Furthermore, separating older and newer raw puar, as well as wet stored and dry stored raw puar is also recommended. Puar does have a few of its own specific recommendations, which differ from other teas. Those who have already started their journey collecting and storing puar are probably familiar with the first suggestion, which is humidity. Unlike other teas with a shorter shelf life, like green, black, or to an extent wulongs, Puar's special sauce is the bacteria that it hosts. Bacterial growth requires humidity in order to thrive, so you want to give it an environment with enough, but not too much, humidity. Now, relative humidity readings do depend on temperature. Without getting too complicated here, hot air is capable of holding more water than cold air can. This is what that relative part refers to how much water is in the air relative to what can be held at its given temperature. But we'll keep this simple for now and recommend to try to keep your relative humidity over at least 50% if you're in a warm climate and over 60% if the temperature is a bit cooler. Anything lower than this and you probably won't see much change with your tea. And even worse, it could dry out. On the other side, too much humidity can ruin a tea if you're not careful. Since we're dealing with bacteria, excessive moisture can make a friendly environment for some unwanted friends, also known as mold. A recommendation is not to exceed 70 to 75% relative humidity, again, depending on the temperature of your storage. Keep in mind that there are no hard and fast rules to storing your tea. These are simply our recommendations in terms of a safe humidity range. It's best to keep your pour safe from extreme temperatures and fluctuations as well. This means keeping your tea off the ground and away from exterior facing walls to avoid sudden changes in temperature. As we mentioned, temperature and humidity work together, so you'll also want to make sure that temperature isn't too hot or too cold, as this will ensure that there is not too much or too little moisture in the air. Additionally, temperature also directly affects the microbes and enzyme activity in your puar. Higher temperatures will produce more enzyme activity, while lower temperatures will reduce the enzyme activity. Anywhere between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius should be a good temperature, Again, these are just our recommendations. The last major consideration when storing puar is the airflow. While most other teas should restrict their exposure to oxygen so that they don't go stale or lose fragrance, oxidization is actually one of the key aspects of aging puar. While the bacteria like humidity and higher temperatures for fermentation, the leaves age through a slow oxidization process. This doesn't mean you need to leave your puar by an open window, but we also don't recommend sealing it off to lock out oxygen. Ideally, puar cakes should be stored together in a relatively close space. They don't need all that much air. Too much airflow or open air could dry out your puar. All you need to do is check on it once in a while and perhaps rotate your teas if you have a lot of teas stacked up in one place. Okay then, now that you know what puar likes, how can you give it what it wants? And more importantly, what do you want to get out of your storage? How do you want your teas to taste in one, 5, 10, or even 20 years down the road. We'll dive into this in our next video of this two-part series. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video.
But if we're already that far in the future, then simply click the link in the description below. And of course, don't forget to like this video. It will make your tea taste better. We can't say exactly how or why, it just does.